Is 3D printing going to revolutionize and outperform traditionally made fins in surfing? I'll answer that for you by the end of this video as I put my custom designed and 3D printed fins to the test against my favorite set of carbon fiber futures fins at one of the most high performance waves in the world, Lower Trestle. Before we dive into it, watch these two clips and let me know in the comments which one you think I'm riding the 3D printed fins on. Show me how to lie, you're getting better all the time and turning all against one is an art that's hard to teach. Another clever word sets off an unsuspecting hurt and as you step back in the line, a mob jumps to their feet. Now dance, fucker, dance, man. Now that we're acquainted, what is 3D printing anyway? The process of 3D printing is a form of additive manufacturing, meaning the material is added in thin layers to create a physical product. Contrary to CNC machining, which is subtractive manufacturing, where you start with a big brick of aluminum or plastic or any other material and chip away at it like a sculpture. Without going into too much more detail, these fins initially started off in a spool of wire similar to this, or also known as filament. It is then run through some tubing into the machine where it meets a super hot nozzle that melts it on contact. It then draws and fills in a layer similar to like you would on a coloring book and then incrementally moves up until you have a physical product. In this case, for every one millimeter, there are five different layers. Depending on the machine, we can now print in an amazing array of different materials from plastic to metal and everything in between plastic being the fastest most affordable and generally most available of all these products within plastic as a material for 3d printing you have an even wider array to pick from and in this case i chose pla which is polylactic acid it's known as being the easiest to use and 3d print and prototype with and was also the only material i had on me at the time this might not have been the best decision because pla absolutely hates water and especially the salty kind i'll be dropping another video with different materials with these fins testing them against my other favorite fins in the coming weeks so subscribe if that's something that sounds interesting to you i might even have a few major projects in the works that could render these obsolete all right enough nerd jargon let's talk about how these plastic blades were brought to life for those of you who don't know me my name's tanner i'm a 27 year old professional surfer with a degree in mechanical engineering and a seriously dense background in building things from the ground up like this off-road race truck i built alongside my dad during my childhood to autonomous surfboard waxing robots in college product design and development and a love for create i spend my time working to build an engineering business as well as chasing some of the world's biggest waves from nazare to jaws and beyond and hopefully this channel and these videos will inspire you to get out of your comfort zone and, and push that passion even if it doesn't make sense most people find it hard to believe that the engineering and surfing thing can blend into one, but here we are. The fins came to mind as soon as I got a halfway decent 3D printer. The quickly died as I wasn't able to produce parts good enough or consistent enough to allow me to actually progress with the design. So much so that I swear I began having nightmares about it. But really, it wasn't until I got my poor man's Audi RS6 Avant wagon, my dream car, sorry I had to plug it, these bamboo X1 Carbon 3D printers. I then took my half done file, printed one fin, it came out perfectly and i swear i almost started tearing up it was possible i knew it was worth trying and i knew i could make something happen even though i was still convinced that they were plastic and they could never really live up to the hype of what a carbon fiber or a fiberglass fin could put out this still got my curiosity moving the whole i can't not possible thing not really my vibe i would say it brings out my inner david goggins as time passed i finally created my first full set of fins and tested them out at zuma on a horrible and windy day they were missing some key components of design like can't that should have made it feel like i was going backwards but they didn't this kept me going and inspired me even more i was onto something um, and immediately redesigned the fins to have can't in them i made the profile a little bit thicker to make for some added rigidity adjusted the rake a tad bit printed another set this set was worlds apart from the last although the layer lines and the coarse feel of the fins were proving to me to be something of serious concern because the friction between the fins and the water would be an issue. I took them out to surf and I'll let you be the judge first. They did well, but not well enough. You can see they have moments of pop and moments of meh. They don't have quite the same response that normal fins do. And if I pushed too hard, they would give out. Through the mishaps, there were some incredible moments though. I went back to the drawing board after that session and did my best to find what I could do differently to improve them. I knew smoothing them out with hand sanding would help, but what about the water? PLA hates the salt water. Already started to deteriorate. Rather than order new material and start again, I made use of a two-part epoxy resin and coated the outside with a really thin layer to smooth out all of those layer lines. Lightly sanded it smooth. To my surprise, it also stiffened the fin tremendously saw there was some swell had a little bit of extra time called one of my best friends noah and said hey i've got something i want to try out i'm going to put together a side-by-side -side comparison at lowers of my 3d printed fins that should not work against my favorite set of fins that i've ever had this was the result comment your thoughts below and i'll go into detail right after 
Show me how to lie, you're getting better all the time And turning all against one is an art that's hard to teach Another clever word sets off an unsuspecting hurt And as you step back in the line, a mob jumps to their feet Now dance, fuck her, dance, man, he never had a chance And I So play it out, I'm wide awake It's a scene about me There's something in your way And now someone is gonna pay And if you can't get what you want Well, it's all because of me Now dance, fuck or dance, man I served the 3D printed fins for three hours straight. And when I came in, the first thing Noah said was, your board looks a lot shorter than it normally does. I'm known for riding boards that are more of that 90s style. And Noah puts in more time at lowers than anyone I've ever met and films all of the best guys and girls in the world. He also knows how much I goof off while I'm surfing. So I'm sure he was surprised to see that I was taking the session seriously. My personal take was initially a bummer. I couldn't really put it together. First few waves, everything wasn't going right. I couldn't tell if it was the fins or the fact that I hadn't waxed my board in four sessions, <laughs> my lack of sleep from the night before. I really, really wanted these to work. After a few waves though, I could feel them light. I started to find a groove, adjusted my foot placement. And at some point or another, honestly forgot that I was even riding 3D printed fins. I found no limitations other than the fact that I made them a little bit too big for my personal preference and the odd delay in responsiveness, which I couldn't really pinpoint. You can see that in this clip where I really have to force the release and it takes a fraction of a second longer to recover that speed, which ultimately results in me losing my ability to maintain the flow with the wave that I would like and having to adjust my surfing to the fins rather than to the wave. In this video, you'll see they don't have quite the same acceleration on your bottom turn when you're going to rebound off the whitewash in a figure eight, but not so much that it's impossible. My best moment was when they held through a turn like this. Even though I fell due to a technique issue, you can see that they held true and there was no signs of them giving out sooner or later than they should have. I came in from that first session to change fins, drink some Santa Cruz Paleo electrolytes, eat a banana, chat with Noah, and get back out there with my carbon fiber fins. I paddled back out a little tired, but determined to push these now high performance fins to the actual test to really see if there's a, a key difference between what I made and what futures made. My first wave back was a notable jump in overall drive and ability to maintain speed. But if you put the clip side by side, you'll see that it's not too much of a noticeable difference. And it was more or less something that I felt it could have been in my head. My biggest takeaway from this fin swap is that I didn't need any extra adjusting when I switched back and forth between the fins, which might be the best compliment that I could give this set. And the most important factor to consider during this experiment, because if you have to change your surfing altogether when you're going back and forth between these fins, there's a major difference between the two. There were moments where the 3D printed fins outperformed the drive of my carbon fiber fins, like here where I caught up the Taylor Knox. It's kind of like a life goal in a way. <laughs> It was totally unexpected. I had no intentions of making this section and times where they lacked that same drive. The biggest downfall with reference to these 3D printed fins is the, the lack of consistency in their actual function of that drive. Again, don't forget they're the wrong material and they should never have worked this good in the first place. <laughs> Surfing is inherently built around feeling rather than scientific metrics. It's an art form and don't forget that. It's so much of it is built around your connection to the ocean, 
and your mental state and everything else associated with. So we could probably sit here for the next 10 years and talk about every single wave and what's different and what's good and what's bad. The subjectivity and inconsistency lies within the fact that it doesn't matter how many waves you ride, none of them will ever be the same. So getting a true side-by-side -side is almost impossible. You also have to account for changes in bodily function like dehydration or the sun. I'm back at my own drawing board with my machines, ready to try the next few designs that I have in mind. Adjust the shape, fix my material choice, and get back into the water because the answer to the question, are 3D printed fins better than what is currently available on the market? No. But could they replace current traditionally manufactured fins in the future? Absolutely. To sum it up, they don't have quite the same consistency and pop that fiberglass or carbon fiber fins do. However, I think I can get them there. The material is ordered. There's some small swell on the way. Subscribe to see them in action. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Now go surfing. You're long overdue. You need some time in the water.